Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kristen and today I'm going to be making a video for you guys talking about my very first placement experience at a wildlife zoo here in Sydney. I thought I would make this video because it's not every day I get to see what a zookeeper's routine is like, work alongside with them and really understand what needs to be done to maintain a zoo and to keep it in a very good condition. And during the week, I even got to follow a uh, wildlife vet. So it was really cool to see how he engages with the animals and just learning from him. So hopefully this would be a good inspiration for you guys out there who are aspiring vets as well as any animal lovers. Also, just a disclaimer, all the clips I'm putting in this video are um, like approved. Okay, maybe not the word approved, but the staff are happy for me to post on social media. They're very happy to help me take photos. Um, and videos as well so yeah these are safe to be um, placed online the reason i'm putting this disclaimer out there is because as a vet student um it's kind of part of like our code of conduct in a way where we have to be sensitive with what we put on the internet because there has been instances in the past where people have posted videos and photos on the internet and organizations uh, saw them and especially if it's like clips of the university zoo um, they might think that the university is not doing the correct husbandry practices and harming the animals so to prevent myself or anyone getting in trouble i just want to make sure you guys that these clips are safe to put on the internet for the very first day i had to wake up quite early I actually woke up at around 6 because I have to get there by 7 30. Usually every morning the staff would meet together at around 7 30 to talk about what needs to be done so on and so forth. Basically how they organize things they have three different divisions so each day I was allocated to a specific division and obviously each division is in charge of specific groups of animals. For the first day I was with division two so the very first thing I did in the morning was to clean out the whole kangaroo walkabout area. Area. So in that area, there's around five kangaroos. There's also an emu and a quokka. So the emu, unfortunately, is lame. I think it was his left leg that's experiencing a lot of pain. I don't think it was a fracture either, but it was definitely um, experiencing atrophy because it's not using that leg as much. The quokka is so stinking cute. His name is Davy. There's only one quokka because the zoo itself is not massive, so usually each enclosure contains a really small amount of animals, usually just one actually. So Davy lives all by himself in his little enclosure. Sadly, he has cryptococcus, which is not commonly found in quokkas, but for some reason, maybe they live in the same uh, same environment as other animals, so that might have caused some cross transmission. But Davy requires um, like a cream ointment, I believe, and I think some other medication. I just also want to quickly add that the Wildlife Sydney Sioux staff and well, zookeepers are literally the most friendly and helpful people that I've ever met on like a placement or just experiences in the past. They were so willing to answer any questions I have. They would actively ask if I have anything that I wanted to learn. So obviously for someone that doesn't have a lot of uh, wildlife background, that was just so comforting. <laughs> I was cleaning the whole kangaroo area. The zookeepers really emphasized that it's really important for me to be very thorough and just take out all the old bits of poop and old foods because if the kangaroos ingest any old food, there is a possibility that there is bacteria hidden in that old food and it will cause this thing called lumpy jaw which actually could be lethal if it's not treated um, fast enough. Throughout the day the zookeepers are super helpful if there's ever any um, a chance for me to observe them administering medication they will quickly pull me over and show me how it's done so for example i think um during the afternoon that day um one of uh the zookeepers took me to where the princess parrots are and administered uh, medication there it was very impressive to see how they can just so swiftly get the bird because i would be panicking if i was the one in there trying to catch the bird so yeah, I was just I was just really admiring their skills. And the very last sort of thing task I had for the day really is to make these things called enrichments for the kangaroos. So enrichments are basically um, we can use different types of objects. It could be cardboard boxes or little I don't know little crates that can be hung from a tree. Basically, enrichments are I call them toys that 
the zookeepers provide the animals to encourage any natural behaviors such as foraging food so that yeah they would have better welfare because they're able to perform their natural behaviors and also because usually food is just fed to them and it's just so easy for them to access to food and yeah it's just not good for them if they're not working for their food when during the day i had to do the thing where well i observed the zookeeper feeding frogs and she offered me to feed i think two of them i was so nervous because i'm usually not this up close to frogs and i I don't know they were so enthusiastic when they uh when the zookeeper was trying to feed them food and they would just hop on the pair of tweezers and i would just be like oh my goodness and but when it was my turn to try to feed them i think the frog that i was asked to feed is either full or they just don't want to eat anymore so i just like stayed there for a solid minute and nothing happened so we just moved on to the next thing and after that, what I had to do was actually go inside of an enclosure, which was so unreal because I'm never on the other side of the glass. But they asked me to walk inside the one of the lizard enclosures to feed them live crickets. And it was really cool because I could see kids and their moms and their parents or whatever, whoever they were with, just outside the glass staring at me and trying to stare at what's in my bucket. Um, it, I just really felt the pressure because it was my very first time feeding lizards and I felt like I was looking like an idiot because I kept on dropping, dropping the crickets back into the bowl the tweezers were so hard to use but I managed to feed all five of them and I felt very proud of myself considering that I've never had a pet lizard or fed lizards before and usually at the end of each day what happens is all of us volunteers usually go down to the kitchen or food prep area and just help clean out the kitchen just scrubbing the floors um, mopping them dry so on and so forth just to make sure there's not a lot of cockroaches hanging around let me just say day two was my personal favorite i think it was probably the highlight of my entire placement so for day two i was allocated to division three and they're mainly in charge of nocturnal animals and koalas so for pretty much the entire morning i followed this one zookeeper around just to clean out all these nocturnal animal enclosures so i was able to step inside the enclosures of a lot of native animals in australia including uh, bilbies rufus batongs a lot of different uh, reptiles and I think there were bats, but I didn't go into the bats enclosure. Oh, and also Spinifex hopping mice. They're like these little cute mice that are just so adorable. So what I had to do for the mice was mainly just, um, just sifting through the sand in their enclosure because a lot of the old bits of food and little pieces of poop might be hidden within the sand. So it's really important for me to make sure that sand is clean so they don't get like any diseases. Um, or anything or eat their own food or their own old food because that would be so bad we also took out a snake to sunbathe it was a oh was it a python i forgot but you guys will see it in the clip but it was really cool just to casually take a snake out and just lay it in the sun and watch it sunbathe i don't know just it was so cool <laughs> right before lunch actually one of the staff over at sea live invited me and my friend who was also um, in the placement with me to head over to pat a dugong, which was insane. <laughs> I've never seen a dugong this up close in life, let alone pat one. So I think it was one of their daily shows where they asked the dugong, uh, well, they try to train the dugong and um, kids get to throw in toys for the dugong to play. It's super wholesome, it's super cute. But I just got to lay down on this platform and yeah, just stick my hand into the water and start patting this dugong. The, I don't know, it feels, the skin of the dugong is very smooth, but it also has like sparse hairs along its back. I'm not sure about other parts of the body, but I was only able to pat the back. And I don't know, that was also something that felt surreal. <laughs> After lunch, I was able to head over actually to the crocodile enclosure with the zookeeper because near the crocodile enclosure, there's actually this turtle that requires a bit of training. And it was just so interesting to observe. Um, just like training dogs and cats, which I'm more familiar with 
they use the same tactic, which is positive reinforcement. So what the zookeeper did was to place this rod with like a bright orange ball on the end into the water and the turtle would know to swim up because it's expecting food as a reward. So they just keep on doing that. Um, yeah, just to really reinforce that behavior. So that type of behavior is really important when they want to check up on the turtle. So whenever they put in the rod, it would know to swim towards it. So yeah, it's ready for some sort of checkup or medication in the future. And the next thing that happened was probably my favorite thing are the sugar gliders. We got to walk inside of the enclosure of the sugar gliders and weigh them because it's really important to monitor animals' weight just to make sure they're not losing a lot of weight or gaining a lot of weight. So we walked in and she started weighing sugar gliders and she passed me not one, but two of these sugar gliders and I was having a blast. I was screaming internally, but I gotta keep my cool because I don't wanna come off like some crazy student or something but i just love them they're so cute and fluffy their tails are just curled in such a perfect way and the last few things for the day included me making more enrichments for these animals but this time i made enrichments for the bilbies and the rufus batongs and i think the spin affects mice as well but yeah i usually go to the storage area just to pick out any materials that i think would be good for making these enrichment toys suitable for each animal because obviously each animal behaves differently and forage food differently so it's very important for me to cater to that to make sure they're actually exhibiting the correct natural behavior and once again the last thing for today is to just clean up the kitchen not the most exciting but it's good that I'm helping out the zookeepers. Day three, I was with Division One. They're in charge of a few enclosures around the zoo, actually, quite a wide range. The first thing I did in the morning was actually to clean out the wallaby and wombat enclosure. I actually had to climb up to the rocks and sweep down any like crunchy leaves and bits of poop. Honestly, throughout the placement, I just helped the zookeepers clean out the enclosures mainly. Just, yeah, really sweeping a lot of poop and just cleaning things. <laughs> but that's just pretty much what you expect when you go on placement. Um, yeah, don't expect too much, especially during the first year because I guess I know that I don't know that much yet. So it's very natural that I don't get to be as hands-on when it comes to treating animals things like that. So it's good to have that open-minded um, mindset so you'll still get a lot from a placement. So during when I was just staying on the rocks, I really had to make sure I wasn't on a fall off because it was quite high off the ground and yet yeah, the wallabies would be really curious and like come up to you and try to sniff you and see if you can give them extra food. They're just so oh, cute but they're also like they bit my friend so I got really nervous um, when I was around them especially when they're trying to like beg for food i just wanted to be careful also for the wombat he was so cute his name is ringo he's just like this he looks very cuddly and cute but i just learned that wombats can bite you hard like they can actually take off your kneecap if they feel threatened by you the things that i had to do during the morning was to clean out yabby cages they keep yabbies for um food for certain reptiles i believe and also i clean out the live food section so as i mentioned previously you would um or not you but the zookeepers would have to feed frogs or lizards um live crocodiles or crickets and other types of insects so they keep them in like a nice place um so those little like containers that are where the insects are living must be cleaned as well because you don't want them to die because that would mean they don't have any food to feed the reptiles or frogs to be honest this day wasn't super duper exciting because the team that i was on there were two men down like they yeah something happened and they just couldn't come to work so i could tell the like the remaining two staff members that i was with they were feeling quite flustered and just yeah rushing around a lot so i felt like that day my step count really went up because i was just walking up walking down walking back walking forth um just to grab stuff for the staff but yeah i was still really grateful that um they were still willing to take out their time to just give me 
jobs to do and make sure I was actually enjoying my day. During the afternoon, pretty much I was just, yeah, observing the zookeeper preparing food for the numbat, tree kangaroo, and some echidnas at one of the areas within the zoo. Um, the numbat was so cute, but he's so agile and turns out he can really nip you hard if also if it feels threatened. Um, I've never seen a tree kangaroo this close up before, but he's just really cute. Like he looks really derpy at certain angles. So yeah, it's probably one of my newfound favorite animals actually. And during the end of the day, um, one of the staff member that I was with, she was just so nice. She was like, I feel really bad that you didn't get to do any exciting things today. I'll try to make it more interesting for you. And she actually told me um, or asked me to go to the cassowary enclosure. So cassowaries are dangerous animals. So yeah, it was like the, you have to be behind this fence when you're trying to feed it because it can attack you. It has a potential to, but I pretty much did the cassowary um, encounter that guests would do if they were to pay to do the encounter. Um, funny story, I like to tell people about this. When I was a kid, I actually had a nightmare that a cassowary tried to eat me. So I guess in a way I was overcoming my fears. Day four is vet day, also another favorite day of mine because finally something <laughs> that's more related to what I do. The vet we followed around, he, I can tell he's very knowledgeable. He had many, many experiences. He actually set up a course at TAFE for, yeah, anyone that wants to be a zookeeper and require some sort of training. He knows a lot about exotics, especially birds, and he even heals like spiders. After talking to him, it made me realize my passion really matters. It doesn't matter if I'm like ranked first in my entire cohort. I just really need to drive myself to continue to learn because learning never stops in any industry really. So I'm just really excited for yeah, what I'm about to experience in the future actually. A few things um, that we kind of checked up on was the emu that I mentioned before, the lame leg, obviously that needs to be checked up on um, to continue to, yeah, he continued to communicate with the staff there to see how they can train the emu to make sure the emu is walking and using his muscles. Some of the frogs have edema, which means that they have like the fluid that's meant to be in their blood vessels remain outside. So they have like a bit of swelling um, on the leg or arm. And in order to fix um, edema in these frogs, they need to make this sort of, some sort of reptile fluid to soak them in um, so that the osmotic balance would be um, balanced out again. So then the fluid will go back to where it belongs and it would stop swelling. The quokka that I mentioned before, Davy, was brought into the vet block um, just to take a blood sample but to put it under anesthetic. So under anesthetic, I got to, you know, hear its heartbeat, um, kind of see how fast or slow it was going to be like. And yeah, they gave us tips on anesthetics because obviously that's something that we, you would use a lot, whether it's in domestic, well, especially in domestic um, work with cats and dogs um, for like... Um, surgeries such as neuter. They also took a lot of blood samples from a few koalas so it was just really cool to see um, what's the proper restraint of koalas because I've never seen that done before obviously and yeah it's really interesting to see the temperament of the different koalas. Some are very cooperative and some are not. Same with dogs and cats. The main reason that they wanted to take blood samples is to monitor for cryptococcus because obviously they don't want that to spread across all the koalas within the zoo. How can I forget to talk about this? So basically um, during the middle of the day they wanted to release two young princess parrots into the enclosure because not into the enclosure, into the zoo because the entire zoo is actually covered with nets and birds within the zoo can actually freely freely fly anywhere that they would like. Um, so yeah, that's just a really cool feature of the zoo. And someone told me to help fetch in, uh, like a little small net to just quickly grab the birds and just set them free. I didn't realize how low the entrance of the cage was and I bumped my head onto the cage and it started bleeding and I was just like oh my goodness but thankfully the the scrape wasn't as bad as I thought um but yeah it's definitely a souvenir 
for my placement. But I'm sure it'll go away in a few weeks or so. Okay, so for the last day, I was back with Division 3 again, so I got to work with nocturnal animals and koalas once again, which I really enjoyed. Um, the first thing I did that day was just clean out the koala encounter area, just to scrub anything that's clean, make sure all the branches are clean as well to once again prevent cryptococcus. And next, I got allocated back to the nocturnal animals area. Um, for this day, the oh, this zookeeper I followed was such a standout. Um, she was actually the one that kind of changed the whole zoo volunteer program to make it more immersive for us so we can learn more, which I was really thankful for. She taught me so much. Um, yeah, she was just uh, very willing to answer any questions once again and give me tips on how to just clean out the enclosures and ensure the animal welfare of these nocturnal animals. So I did the so I did the same things and just cleaned out the bilbies, the rufous batongs, and the spinnies as well. Um, just giving them food and once again just sifting through the sand for anything that's old. So after that, I was able to go up to the koala encounter with that same uh, zookeeper. She was very willing to talk about any husbandry pact practices with koalas, um, any general facts I want to learn about koalas. Yeah, it was just really cool and she allowed me to, to kind of pick down the eucalyptus leaves to smell the different types of eucalyptus because each of them have, yeah, quite a subtle difference actually. Just to debunk a myth out there, no, koalas don't get high from eating eucalyptus leaves. It's just because eucalyptus is so low in nutritional value that they appear very lethargic. It's just because they don't have that much energy in their diet. The zookeeper that I was with gave a very good analogy, which was imagine if someone gave you celery juice or just a bundle of celery and asked you to do like really physical work. Um, that's why the koalas look very high or tired all the time. A really exciting thing that I also got to do was to be in the crocodile encounter. So what happens is they usually go around the zoo to find people that might be keen to do the crocodile encounter, but we wouldn't tell them what animal they're going to have an encounter with first, which makes it even more exciting. So we went around and the zookeeper chose two guys um, that's just visiting the zoo for the day and we just followed along. And yeah, I was able to learn a lot about the crocodile. Um, Rocky the crocodile, um, he is very dangerous as well, so there was also a fence between us and the, the body of water that he lives in. Um, I think Rocky used to live on a beach, but he really likes to chase after windsurfers, so that's why, um, yeah, I think that's why he got placed in a crocodile farm. And people try to breed Rocky because he has a light color, which is not very common for saltwater crocodiles but he like literally killed both of the girls that they try to mate him with. So I guess that's why he's in the zoo. I really recommend any of you out there watching it that are already in UCID Fed school to sign up for this placement. It's a really good opportunity for you to be up close to Australian wildlife. And I just can't sh like emphasize this enough with the stuff. They are actually so nice. Like I'm just, incredibly thankful for them to make my whole experience so good. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any friends or family members that really want to become a vet student, tell them to subscribe to my channel. Um, I think my plan is to not like do a lot of, well, I'm gonna do like a mix of vet school videos, but also like, you know, sprinkle in some lifestyle videos as well. Cause I think those videos are fun to make. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.